This is one of these moments where we are just going to roll up our sleeves and dive right into God's Word. And so today we are in 1 John chapter 3, verses 9 and 10. Listen to what John says. John says, anyone born of God refuses to practice sin. Why? Verse continues, because God's seed abides in him. He cannot go on sinning because he has been born of God. Now that statement right there in in verse 9 is such a big statement where it says, God's seed abides in him. What does that mean? What does that mean for you and me who belong to Jesus Christ? What does it mean for you and me as, as children of God that God's seed abides in you, in me? God's seed actually refers to God's divine life given to you and me in Christ. And this includes God's incredible transformative grace that we've been given in Jesus as a gift. This includes resurrection life. This includes the indwelling presence and power of the Holy Spirit. This includes this whole new creation given to us in Christ. We are these new creatures in Christ. We have a whole new nature in Christ. Amazing stuff. But John's point cannot be missed. That for a person who's been given this, a person who's truly been given this incredible saving grace, God's divine life given to you and me in Christ, for that person who's indwelt by the Holy Spirit, they they can't continue going on in sin. They just can't. That statement, they refuse to practice sin. They refuse to be given over to a life that is controlled by sin and sin nature. We can't do that any longer. Why? Because God's seed is in me. His divine life, this transformative grace that saves me forever in Jesus Christ is present with me. God himself lives in me in the Holy Spirit. I can't can't continue in that way. And that's so true. Now look at verse 10. He says, by this, the children of God are distinguished from the children of the devil. And so how is that? Well, number one, anyone who does not practice righteousness is not of God. And the statement, practice righteousness, means that you live in such a way. And so we talk about the truth that you and I who know Jesus Christ and are known by him, the fact that Christ lives in us. Well, there is a sense in which his holiness and his life has to be revealed by our lives, has to reflect him. The incredible gift of being made right with God through Jesus Christ has the effect of your life out there, your life in relationship with others, that they see the effect of the light of Jesus Christ shining through your life. That's what it means. Practicing righteousness means doing in accordance of reflecting the very glory of Jesus Christ, living in him, uh, revealing him by the way that you live. And that's really true. Verse continues. So anyone who does not practice righteousness is not of God, but nor is anyone who does not love his brother. And so this is another watermark, however you want to call it, barometer for those that are truly in Christ, for those who are truly saved, for those who have a real relationship with God in Christ, who walk in Christ. Here are these guide points or guidelines or barometers. Number one, they practice righteousness. They reflect Christ. And number two, they love they're all about love. They're people who love one another, love your brother, love your sister in Christ. That's it. I tell you, we certainly can recognize that as followers of Jesus. That that, that is to, That's what a true follower of Jesus is to typify, what John just described. But I think another way that we can take verse 10 
is realize that, hey, maybe we've got to see those two barometers and we've got to ask ourselves, okay, is there something in my life uh, that maybe I'm where I'm not reflecting Christ, I'm not reflecting his holiness, his, his righteous character, his light, and then the other question we'd have is, hey, am I really, am I loving my, my brothers and sisters in Christ? Am I loving people? And just kind of ask ourselves those questions because those are the two barometers for you and for me. Okay, let's go ahead and pray. God, we thank you for your word and the way that it convicts us, the way that it guides us, the way that we have discernment from it. We thank you, God, for this gift that we have in Jesus, this divine life, as John described it, God's seed. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord, that you loved us before we were ever born. And Jesus, how you came and gave to us a gift that we could never earn, that we could never achieve ourselves. And thank you, Father, for the sending of, of Jesus and amazing Holy Spirit, how you dwell in us. We, we praise you, God. You're an awesome God. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, let's have a great day with this in mind. And tomorrow we will continue in 1 John.